Today, on our audio history series, we're going to talk about a book. A book published in 2022 called Revolution, but it's not about politics, it's about turntables. Today in the audio history series, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to review a book rather than talking about a specific piece of historic audio equipment. As you know, we are very interested in the history of audio. We've done a couple of books ourselves. Here's the one we did on electronics. We've also done one on loudspeakers. This is a nice complement to the Absolute Sounds illustrated history of audio in that it covers turntables. The book is called Revolution. It's by Gideon Schwartz, and it was published in 2022, so uh, it's pretty up-to-date. goes through about 2020, I would say. Uh, but what's really interesting about this book and what I really enjoyed about it is how it covers the early days of turntables. And what stood out for me was the deep coverage that it gives the early acoustic era, you might call these, I would call them Victrolas, uh, where the recording was made acoustically. There were really no electronics involved. The singer or the orchestra played into a horn and a diaphragm vibrated the needle that cut the master version of the record. And then when you played it back, the needle on your copy of the recording uh, vibrated a diaphragm and that diaphragm played back through a uh, horn and that's what made the sound. Kind of hard to believe that that's what people were doing, but from maybe 1870 through 1920, after 1920, uh, that's how things were done. And then there was a transition and the transition was the transition from pure acoustical recording to electroacoustic recording. So on the uh, recording side of things, there were microphones and preamps and uh, tape decks that changed the nature of the recording process. Uh, and then the tape was used ultimately to drive the cutting machine that made the master and that was used to reproduce records. And then on the other end of things, the electronics revolution occurred in terms of how playback happened. So there was still a needle in a groove, just like in the acoustic era, but uh, the needle vibrated and made electrical signals, which then went into electronic equipment and into amplifiers and drove loudspeakers electronically. A really different approach and that revolution happened in the course of about 20 years maybe less and in part occurred because radio was evolving at the same time that records were uh, coming to be a major cultural feature and in addition to that the telephone system was being built out and as the telephone system expanded uh, better and better amplification was required and so there was a revolution that occurred in how recordings were made and how uh, amplification was able to happen and those revolutions led us to the recording or the playback system that we have today. And uh, Schwartz goes into quite a bit of detail on how that happened, who the players were, and I quite enjoyed that part of it. The second thing I really enjoyed about this book is the superb photography, particularly of really old equipment. Just take a look at these pages. Those are old Victrolas, probably restored, but nonetheless, the photography is just beautifully done. And you can see tons of detail in the equipment and just imagine what it would have been like to have listened on that kind of equipment. And if you go forward, you see, and some of you may be old enough to remember this, 
Let me show you the 1960s, for example. And uh, one of the most famous turntables ever, the Acoustic Research XA turntable is nicely featured here. But in addition, Schwartz has got some uh, esoteric stuff from Europe that I don't remember or hadn't seen or maybe wasn't imported to the United States. These are brown turntables. Uh, again, as I said, beautifully photographed. And then as we go later in time, you can see uh, some of the turntables from uh, British manufacturers. And as we go further on, Japanese stuff, Microseki, and so on. Just hundreds of turntables, clear audio. You'll probably remember this because as we get more recent, uh, your memory uh, is likely better. Uh, anyway, just gorgeous photography and photography of some turntables that I wasn't familiar with and I have been in audio since 1968, so a lot of the uh, 60s and 70s stuff I remember personally, but nonetheless there were some turntables that I hadn't seen and really enjoyed looking at as well as taking a trip down memory lane. Just a brief interruption esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product, it's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack. First of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions, we'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. Now, if I have any critique of the book, I would say it's that as we get toward the modern era, as we get into the 70s, 80s, and 90s, we lose a little bit of the sense of historical development, and the book turns slightly more into being a catalog of the turntables that different manufacturers made. Uh, and that's fine, and I really enjoyed looking at the pictures and reading about uh, some of the uh, design features that I had forgotten about or features that were included in turntables that I had never seen before. So that, that part of the book is still super enjoyable. Uh, but I felt like the historical thread got lost a little bit. Uh, let me give you one example, which comes actually from the 1970s. There's a connection between the Ariston turntable and the Lynn Sondek. And I hadn't actually known about this, but uh, the Ariston was originally uh, designed and then taken to outsourced manufacturing that Ivor Tiefenbrunn, the uh, major domo of Lynn Sondek, uh, his father owned a machining and manufacturing company that made the Ariston turntable. Uh, Tiefenbrunn, I guess, uh, saw that turntable design and thought he could do somewhat better, and the Lynn Sondek, which is a similar kind of suspended uh, platter, suspended tone arm design, uh, was born of that uh, partnership between Ariston and uh, Tiefenbrunn Sr.'s manufacturing firm. Uh, what I thought was a little bit underdeveloped in that story was why did Lynn go on to really be a dominant player in the turntable market of the, 17, the 1970s and 1980s and Ariston kind of faded from view? Uh, I would like to have known more about that, but you know maybe that's just me and it wouldn't matter to you. But 
Uh, that's the historical kind of thread that I'm talking about. Uh, now, part of the problem here is that there were so many people who got into the turntable business in uh, continental Europe, in Great Britain, in Japan, and in the United States. And there are just lots and lots of manufacturers making lots and lots of turntables. And it's hard to unpack what inevitably is a somewhat incremental history. But I would like to have seen a little bit more historical analysis of why things went the way they did, and uh, particularly some concentration on how the turntable manufacturers of the 90s and the 2000s stuck it out, and then really uh, capitalized on the vinyl and analog uh, renaissance that we've seen in the last two decades. So I would like to see that. Maybe someone will do another book, but I still, I want to emphasize, I cannot recommend this book enough. It is beautiful, beautifully produced, very easy to read, very enjoyable to read. I think you will love it, and it is excellent value for money. I hope you've enjoyed this segment of audio history on The Absolute Sound on YouTube. Uh, as always, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe, uh, click on the notifications button so that you can see new episodes that we do. And uh, as always, please visit us on the web as well. And thank you for watching.